All right, this tutorial is just to show you how to interact with the main stage template that we are using. Things may change in the future as far as exactly what it looks like, but this is hopefully just giving you the basics. So first of all, our patches are here in this shortcut folder, main stage patches. Just so you know, this shortcut is actually just found, it goes to a folder in the document. So if you're ever looking for it anywhere else, it's in documents, main stage patches. There we go. So uh, here's the template. I've got a couple other folders, some archived old song patches um, from different templates. Our current song patches, this is where you would export um, a song patch if you liked it and you wanted to keep it. Um, this is where I'm going to keep some how-to videos just like this one. And then some purchase patches. This is just full of some patches we have purchased if you're ever looking for a new sound. There's a bunch of good sounds in here. You can poke around um, and then import it into the template and map it to wherever you would like to have it. So first we're going to open up the template and actually I've already got it open so I'm going to scroll over here. Here it is. Alright, so uh, I'm going to take you through a quick tour of what's what on here. We've got um, three different sections. I know it's kind of hard to see on here but we've got piano, pads, and leads. So uh, each of the fader is, is going to be a different sound and then uh, a couple knobs are going to control some stuff and some buttons are going to control some stuff. Um, so we've got, you know, in this, in this certain patch right here, we've got uh, uh, giant piano uh, and then we've got a Rhodes piano over here. Um, uh, and then to show you what these knobs do, we've got a reverb knob which is going to add reverb. So a lot of these, the piano, the Rhodes, they'll have reverb in them already. This is going to add additional reverb, make it more spacious. Um, on top of that reverb, there's also a shimmer button down here, which is going to not only make it um, sound like a good reverb, but it's actually going to add a lot of brightness, um, and you'll, you'll hear it when you play it. It's, it makes it very shimmery. Uh, then we've got some delay controls over here. Um, so these delay controls are also ma uh, mapped to these. This is going to be, I'm going to go ahead and go full screen here for a second. Uh, this is going to be your eighth delay, and this is going to be your dotted eighth delay. Don't use them simultaneously or it'll get a little crazy. Um, the volume of the delay is here as far as how much do you want. The tone of the, of the delay is here. The tone, uh, if you do this, is going to just be a more muted delay up here, a brighter delay. Um, and then lastly, the low cut button over here. What that does is um, it takes everything under about 350 hertz and drops it by 7 decibels. So basically it cuts out a lot of that low end um, uh, piano that's going to interact with the bass guitar. So if you're ever playing a piano that's nice and full and you really like the way it sounds, but you don't want to uh, you don't want to take uh, take away from the punch of the bass, just go ahead and hit that low cut and your piano will now be fitting more into where you belong without st stomping on the bass. All right, moving over into the pad. So as you can see, we've got four different pad sounds here and then we've got an overall pads um, uh, uh, level there. So if I go I'm going to make some noise real quick. So this one is going to control the overall pad sounds. Now there's nothing coming out. And if I bump it up, there it will it will come out. Okay, now here you can control these four different sounds. You can mix them, match them to make them sound, uh, maybe find a nice unique pad sound for the song you're working on. Maybe add a little reverb, maybe add some shimmer, which you can use simultaneously. Uh, here, let's, let's do that. Let's make it real bright. Okay, I'm going bright, so I'm going to get some trance and some Holy Spirit up in there. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn my... All right, there you go, and you can control these to make it sound a little different, and then your overall volume is here. You've got a high-pass filter here, oops, which takes out your low end. And your mod wheel here is your low pass filter, which takes out your high end. So you could find a nice pad that you like. It's right in the middle of these. Maybe you just want something like that. Maybe a little less intense. Ooh, that's nice. There you go. All right, over here you have your leads, which um, of course are, are going to be your. Here, let me turn on the pads real quick. Going to be your lead sounds. 
which I don't think, sorry, I don't think I've got them triggered. So, but uh, your, your lead sounds there, they have their own low pass filter as well. Right here, the mod wheel does not affect the lead right now. And then you've got this assignable switch, which right now doesn't do anything, it's assignable, meaning you can assign it. I'll show you how to do that in another video. So these buttons here, currently unassigned, at the, uh, later when you're watching this video, maybe they will be assigned, but they say NA right now, not assigned. And you could go in there and uh, assign them to anything you wanted to, which I'll show you how to do in a later video. Um, but that's basically it. Here's where you navigate between your patches. On the Akai board, there's an, some, an, some up and down buttons, so you don't even have to click. And of course, right here, you've got your two keyboards. And these uh, show you what layers. I know the colors are bad. I'll probably change them later so you, later so you can actually read. But uh, these show you what sounds are attached to each keyboard. And, of course, you got your sustain pedals. Lastly, um, we're going to go from top to bottom over here. We've got our output. It shows you our CPU, lo CPU loads and so you know the computer's not getting overworked. This here is a little MIDI indicator that will let you know if you are getting MIDI signal from whatever device you're trying to do. This is a great troubleshooter if you've got a keyboard that's not acting right. Uh, at least let you know if you're getting a MIDI signal or not. This is your overall out volume output. Notes right here, you could type notes into your patch. Uh, really helpful if you just wanted to, to jot down some quick reminders about the song and about how to use these patches to, to interact with them. All right, lastly over here, we have, if you'd see, we have 16 buttons, which are going to map to the 16 drum pads on the Akai board. Um, they're not all used right now, but I tried to put them where I thought they best belonged. Panic button is top left. I wanted it kind of out of reach so you don't accidentally uh, hit it, but you can easily identify it. So, And, of course, that's going to turn off all sounds just in, in a split second. We've got a tap tempo here, which does exactly what it sounds like. Nothing here. And then these are two loops, which I'll show you how to use later, but just know that the bottom, bottom two rows of buttons on the drum pads are going to control your loops, record, erase, stop, and play. Show you how to use them later. They're really cool. But guys, that's basically it. I'm going to go back here. And whenever you're making a patch, uh, the big thing that we want to do, we don't want to run out of these. Of course, you can run through here to try them and see which ones you like. And, and there's probably going to be more in here later on when you come to look, um, possibly with better names. Um, but what we want to do is you want to create a set right here. What you do from here, new set. You'll name it after your service. You'll, you'll copy and paste the patches you want into your set. And then after your set, if you really like a patch that you created, let's say you made some adjustments to one patch. Uh, if that happens, by the way, just press OK. If you really like a patch you created, then you can export it. Show you how to do that later, but you could basically save that somewhere else. But I want you to delete the set when you're done because we don't want to build up a bunch of sets over here. It's going to make this file size huge and slow. So that's the basics, guys. Again, if you want, if you if you like this one, go ahead and click on it, copy it, come to your set, paste it. It's going to import it in. There you go. You can move it around, and you're ready to go. You can do whatever you want to this, and I don't care if you mess these up. Somebody might get a little angry, but enjoy.